Okay. And um, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Fabio Bovenga, uh, David Anitti, Raffaele Nutricato, and uh, Maria Teresa Chiaradia, all from Italy, from uh, a National Research Council, uh, GAP, a small uh, spin-off company of the University of Bari, and the Department of Physics, uh, University of Bari. How do I Oops. Sorry. Um, I also like to uh, acknowledge the Italian Space Agency who provided uh, uh, Cosmos, Sky May May data, uh, Cosmos Sky Med data uh, that we use in our, our research. And uh, I also like to acknowledge the collaboration with the Center for Geospatial Information of Haiti. Uh, the key point uh, I'd like to make today is that uh, we are getting more and more data from uh, radar satellites and also the data from uh, high resolution uh, satellites like uh, Cosmos SkyMet, uh, Terrasur X uh, and also from RadarSat2. And all this implies uh, ever increasing use of multi-temporal inter interferometry for regular wide area monitoring of slope and uh, substance hazards. And our recent experience shows that uh, uh, MTI is now more effective uh, for local and regional scale hazard monitoring and that's because we have improved the uh, uh, spatial and uh, temporal uh, resolutions of, uh, of the new r radar sensors. And this is, this is very important for landslides, for example, because the, these are local scale features and we need good resolution to, to appreciate the changes. Um, so I have a few words on multi-temporal interferometry first and then uh, also on uh, the data we, we work with. And then I'll move to uh, application examples. Uh, first case from uh, Southern Gansu Mountains from, from China. Uh, I'll talk about local and wide area uh, instability study using high resolution 3 meter uh, Cosmos Sky Med data. And then I'll show a case of uh, uh, coastal substance, again using uh, high resolution uh, Cosmos Sky Med data uh, in the area of Port-au-Prince, the, the capital of, of Haiti. Uh, this, this morning I showed another case that I don't have time to show uh, now, uh, that regarded the, uh, 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 an accident that happened in Italy, and uh, I don't know if the poster is still up there, but uh, it's an inter interesting case because uh, we could uh, uh, see the potential uh, of uh, long-term multi-temporal multi interferometry for giving us some early warning signals of deformation. And if I have time, I'll, I'll also mention some uh, MTI limitations and I'll try to match them by some good news. Uh, okay, I, I guess I, uh, most of you know uh, what multi-temporal multi interferometry is uh, or we work with good or, or coherent radar targets and they are often called persistent scatters and uh, what you need is a, a series of, of images and uh, uh, advanced processing algorithms like uh, PSI persistent scatters interferometry or SBAS or, or STAMS and you identify those targets and measure the distance changes uh, uh, in time. Um, for those who like, uh, who are interested in lens investigation using uh, multi-temporal interferometry, I'd like to uh, mention this uh, recent review article. It was published in Engineering Geology, uh, a journal of Elsevier, uh, this year, uh, volume 174. And there's also a, a, a new book published by Elsevier. I mention Elsevier because it's, it's the official sponsor of this meeting, so I can do it. And uh, if you're interested in, uh, again, landslides, remote sensing of landslide motion, there's a chapter in this book uh, with emphasis on multi-temporal applications. So the advantage of using MTI is that we have wide area coverage and locally dense information uh, on ground surface deformations. And the measurements uh, are, have uh, millimetric precision. And basically, uh, it's simple. Uh, we take uh, moving radar targets as, as direct indicators of, uh, of 
potential slope or, or subsidence hazards. So we end up with uh, ground deformation maps and temporal deformation series or time series of deformations for, for each good radar target. Um, this shows uh, the, the uh, historic and uh, new radar uh, satellite missions. And the point here is that uh, we're getting more satellites in, with time, and uh, this means more data available for, for work. And uh, I think this trend, this trend will continue, and so we can expect more and more data to work with. Uh, I highlighted in green here the, the high-resolution sensors, Cosmos KaiMet and uh, Terrasar X. And, uh, as of this year, we have also Sentinel-1, which has a shorter repeat cycle, which is also important for monitoring purposes. Okay, this uh, again to show that the new generation x uh, sensors have a shorter repeat cycle. Well, with Terrasar X, you, we go down to 11 days with Cosmos SkyMed, eight or even four days with the with, uh, all uh, uh, satellites, and this is important because it means we can measure uh, faster displacement or larger displacement, and th this is important in landslide uh, hazard assessment. And the other important thing is that we have better resolution. Uh, we go down to one meter uh, with Cosmos SkyMed and, and Terrasar X. And again, uh, landslides are local scale features, and so this means more detailed information. Uh, the, the case studies I'll, I'll describe, uh, number one is from uh, uh, Western China, and number two is in Haiti. Uh, the Chinese case study, uh, the area of interest is located near the town of uh, Zhouchou in the Gansu, pro Gansu province, just west of, uh, uh, east of Tibet. And this is uh, an area prone to large magnitude earthquakes, and for example, the, the 2008 Wenchuan earthquake also affected this, this area. There are also many uh, landslides, and this, uh, this map here shows uh, those, those colored dots indicate uh, uh, major landslides, and they concentrate uh, along this major river valley here uh, between the town of Zhouchou and the city of Longyan. This is uh, an example of one of those uh, large landslides. Uh, this is uh, two and a half miles long, uh, just west of uh, the town of Zhouchou here. Uh, we didn't have any, any landslide inventory maps or, or basically no maps to work with. So I used uh, Google Earth tools to, to map some landslides. And uh, this area is about 40 square kilometers and we I ended up with 25 landslides here more or less large and and more or less active and here are the uh, results from processing of Cosmos Sky Med images uh, we ended up with uh, over 40,000 uh, permanent scatters uh, very good density more than 1000 points per square kilometer In the green we have uh, uh, points that don't move stable and uh, uh, blue, bluish color indicates movement towards the satellite sensor. You see uh, the, the looking direction here of the satellite. So here. And the uh, reddish indicates the movement away from the satellite sensor. And uh, you can see a few clusters of moving points that more or less coincide with the limits of the outlines of those uh, landslides. And here is an example of, of two of those large landslides and also time series here of the formation and in this case number one uh, an example here we have uh, displacements uh, average annual displacement of about 60 millimeters per year or, or if you wish two and a half uh, inches per year and in the second case we have a uh, moving points uh, that reach uh, velocity of 140 millimeters per year or five and a half inches per year. So these are significant displacements. Um, but obviously with the advantage of, of working with satellite images or remote sensing is that we have uh, opportunity to have wide area coverage. And uh, here I'm showing the uh, full frame results of Cosmos Sky uh, 
processing, uh, processing of Cosmos Sky images. Uh, we're, I'm showing more than 200,000 uh, targets that we identified, and uh, this area is about 40, square ki 40 kilometers across. And as you can see, there are several, more than several clusters of, of moving points, those reddish and uh, uh, bluish colored points, and they uh, help us to I identify many active landslides in this area. So it's really, it wor works pretty well in, in this area. Now the second case is uh, regards to subsidence. Again, we are in, uh, in a seismically active region. Uh, you may recall the, uh, the January 2010 uh, earthquake that really de devastated uh, the, the metropolitan area of Haiti. And this is the uh, area coverage of our high resolution Cosmos Sky Met images, three meter resolution. Uh, uh, centered on, on the area, uh, metropolitan area of Port-au-Prince. And uh, these are the results from processing. Uh, we ended up uh, with nearly three million uh, targets, really high density, a lot of points, a lot of information, and uh, those uh, reddish colors along the coast here, uh, yellowish reddish, indicate displacement, displacement away from the satellite sensor and uh, the area is flat and so obviously we're looking at subsidence and uh, we're getting uh, uh, displacements uh, uh, reaching more than three centimeters per year. And this is example of, of some time series, a sta stable point here from, from, from the uh, soccer stadium of, of Haiti, of, of uh, Port-au-Prince and uh, uh, one displacement uh, time series from, from the area, transition area between the subsiding area and the stable area. This is moving about six millimeter per year. You, you may note also the, the nonlinear displacement and the uh, fast moving uh, point from here, more than 30, millim 30 millimeters per year. And now obviously there are some limitations with this uh, technique and we, you can end up with low density of targets in heavily vegetated area or non-urbanized areas. Uh, but our experience shows that the high resolution images really help. We, we get more, more points, more, more information. And if you have vegetation, uh, future alpine sensors will also help. Uh, now we also have the European Space Agency Sentinel. So promises uh, global coverage, consistent acquisitions, and free data. So there will be a, a great uh, background mission to, to work with. Uh, another problem is that we detect only slow motion, uh, but with shorter re revisit times, like with the Cosmos Sky Med, uh, we measure displacement up to several centimeters per, per month. And finally, uh, we, it's difficult to detect sudden or, or strongly nonlinear displacements, but uh, with higher temporal sampling, again like Cosmos Sky Med or Terrasire X, X we, we, get, uh, we pick up nonlinear deformation quite, quite nice, nicely. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. I was wondering if uh, you uh, saw uh, any landslides in Haiti. Did you look for that? Okay, thank you. Yes, indeed. Uh, I didn't show it here, but uh, we picked up some uh, landslides, actually uh, many landslides, and uh, mainly deep-seated deep landslides that we identified. And uh, that was, it's very interesting because, uh, as you know, uh, Haiti is a tropical area, and uh, we're, we're th sort of uh, uh, wondering whether we'll be able to, to pick up good signal in rural areas that uh, you have landslides in Haiti, mountainous rural areas. And uh, working with three meter uh, uh, Cosmos Sky Med images really helps. Uh, we picked up good signals on, on those uh, landslides in rural area and uh, so it's, it's really encouraging, even though it's X-band. Yes, excellent. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.